Lise Lopez, 15 ans, 1m60. Il va falloir que tu t'accroches. Personne ne va te faire de cadeau ici. À partir de demain, c'est 10 heures de sport par semaine. En plus des cours et des entraînements le week-end. Tu donnes tout, là Non, je regarde un peu. Je t'ai laissé 20 messages au moins cette semaine. Je rentre, je suis crevée, je m'écroule. Tu vois le mec derrière toi C'est le coach de l'équipe de France. Et il pense que t'as rien à foutre ici. Il est toujours comme ça, Fred. Avec plus c'est plus de casse, plus tu l'écoutes, et plus tu l'écoutes, meilleur tu deviens. Je veux savoir ce que t'as dans le ventre, là, hein Tu vois, je te l'avais dit, hein Le travail paye. Une fusée. Championne de France. On dirait une gamine, là Bon, alors, comment ça se passe, l'entraînement C'est la chouchoute, alors, bon. Qu'est-ce que tu fais Si c'était Fred, tu dirais quoi Tu vois pas qu'il nous regarde, là Tu parlé à quelqu'un. Qu'est-ce qui s'est passé Tu sais de quoi je parle oh. Welcome to this BFI at home event and Women with a Movie Camera Q&A. My name is Sophie Monks Kaufman. I'm a film and culture journalist, and I'll be joined by Charlene Favier, the writer and director of Slalom, to talk about her film. Uh, hi, Charlene. Um, thank you for agreeing to talk with us today. Um, just to start at the very beginning, can you tell us where the urge to tell the story of Liz Lopez came from? That's a really personal story. In fact, it came from my memories because uh, all this film is uh, about my childhood, actually. I, I grew up in the mountain. I grew up in the ski resort where, where, where I shot the film. The location is actually my, my mom, apartment and on all those places. I, I really, I, I, know, I know them really well. So I used to do also ski. Uh, competition when I was a, a teenage girl. So uh, in this film, I put a lot of my personal story, even if I, of course, um, bring some um, dramatic um, pieces in it as well. Um, so it's a mix. And when you're drawing from your personal experience in the way that you did, how do you decide what elements to dramatize, uh, what to include and what to leave out? Wow, that's a difficult question because it's uh, actually the, 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 the abuse, the sexual abuse, I didn't, I didn't really leave it like that in this sport. It was in another sport because when I was a kid, I did many, many different sports. My mother is a sport teacher in uh, horses, ski, tennis, I did some water skiing, some judo. So I was really hyperactive kids. So my mother was pushing me doing a lot of sport and music and theater. And so I experienced the, the sexual abuse in, a, in another sport actually, but I, I decided to, to mix the, the, the abuse and the grip, which was a really important uh, subject for me that I already actually, um, filming my short films before um, um i decided to move this thematic on uh, on the mountain because the the landscape was uh, really cinematographic and on on really important on yeah so so it's a mix of on, on my mother that's not my story so for example my mother was really here for me all the time so that's not the case for Liz and you know my father was there. Liz don't have a father, so so you have after. And it's really important, I think, when you when you start with personal um, personal things to to write a movie to 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 bring some some narrative fiction on it. It's really important. If not, you just tell you your your story, you know, and you have to you have to make it universal. You have to make a um, yeah, dramatic. So you have to change many, many, many things. But the roots, the roots, it's, it's me, of course, you know. 
And um, does the experience of dramatizing such a personal trauma, does it change the way that you feel about it? Like the experience itself? Of filming it, of, of making the film? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think this film, the writing of this film was really a therapy for me, actually. So I, I, at the beginning, when I write this story, I didn't understood what I was writing. Like I was telling a story of Lise. I was making this story in the ski field with the mountain, but I was really escaping from the grip and the, and the abuse actually, because I didn't want to face it. Um, more I was writing, more the people around me, my producer, my friend who was reading the script were telling me, Charlene, you, have, you, you are writing on this subject. Do you realize what you are doing? And I was like, oh my God, I'm, I'm gonna stop. You know, I was so afraid, in fact, to face this, this problematic actually. So, so yeah, I, I, it was like five years. It took me five years from the, the beginning of the writing and from the end of the film on I think I changed it myself I changed a lot and it was really a, a really long and, and complex process to to yeah to realize what I experienced when I was a kid and on a lot of uh, yeah so it was really emotional I, I remember when I when I shot actually a short film called Odal Gori I shot this film in 2017 so that was at the middle of the writing process of slalom um, I did this, um, this scene in, in this short film um, of sexual abuse, and that was um, like a training for me before doing the, the theater. Um, to shut that scene was like, I was like completely afraid, and that was really, really emotional for me. I remember when I did the editing, I couldn't stay in the room. So my editor was like editing the scene, and I was like, I couldn't stay in the room. I was like escaping from the editing room all the time, you know. So that was really, yeah. So it, it bring it bring back a lot of um, lot of remember, yeah. Given that it's such a hugely emotional experience for you to tell this type of story, how do you make sure you've assembled a team that you trust to support your vision and also just understand the emotions you're going through? Oh, my team, my team is my family. It's like. It's my cinema family. Like, I'm, I'm, I feel so lucky to, to, to have them around me. Like my DOP, Jan Marito, my first uh, uh, assistant, my uh, editor. It's all men, actually. I have a lot of men around me, but really sensitive men. They are more feminist like I am. They are like really, really sensitive. And they understood before me what I was doing because we work together for like 10 years. We start together, we grow up together in the cinema field. So we did all the short film together. So it, we are like best friends, you know? Um, we knew a lot about uh, each other with my team. So they knew before me what I was running on actually. And they helped me a lot with a, a lot of love and a lot of kindness to, to develop the story. And they, yeah, that was, that was really amazing. And, and, and without them, I think I couldn't do this film like I, like I did because I needed this, uh, this um, love feeling surrounding me to, to, to tell such an um, emotional um, and dramatic story, actually. And my producer as well was really, really, it was, it was sometime I was talking with him and I was like, you are my psychologue. Psycholog? Do you, do you use this word? Oh, like psychothera like, psychotherapist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, psychotherapist. I was telling him yeah. like a lot of stuff in my life that I'd never told to anyone. And, 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 and he understood everything. And that's how we could make this film, you know? Yeah. And, and the actor is the same. Noé, Jeremy, Muriel, all the, all the, the actor crew, they, they understood so much what I was telling. And I think that they, they were all really convinced by the meaning of what we were telling in, in this film. Noé, Muriel, who played the mom, they, they all, all the girl, all the actress, actually, I think they experienced what I was telling in the film. And that's, it was like a cosmos reunion where, you know, you meet the people because they have to say 
as well the same message that you are, you know, you know what I mean? Something like, and we are all fighting with the same uh, target to 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 free the to free the the talking about this subject, you know. So so that was a really strong experience on the shooting. That was so strong. We were like, yeah, that was that was incredible feeling. The scene in the gym. Um where he rapes her is incredibly difficult to watch. And um, it obviously is also, it's a very vulnerable situation for the actors. Um, how did you prepare them ahead of, that, ahead of that scene and make sure they were comfortable? So with Noe, it was really easy actually, because we did the, the short film together, Odalgori, and we had the same uh, sequence. Um, that was really hard for me on the shorts, but after doing it on the shorts, with no way we we knew how to talk, we knew what to do. So that was really we were really relaxed when when we when we do that did that on the on the theater film. And Jeremy he, he, he makes so many films. He's really comfortable with the 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 nudity. So so it, it's, it's really not a problem for him. And after, uh, in fact, we shot the scene really quick half an hour it was done because to protect my actor I wanted to choreograph everything really pre with a really precisely so we knew exactly what we were shooting so it was like four camera axes really simple so every camera axis we need I, I, I knew that I need I need that for the editing so it was um, on, on the scene actually you almost only see the face of Noe you don't see body, you don't see sex, you don't see breast, you don't see a pussy, you know, we, we don't see that. So it's one shot. You have three three different axes to, to make the situation, to understand that he's gonna have sex with her. And after it's just one shot on her, her, her face. So so it was it was quite really easy. And we were really relaxed. Um, you know, my team, my crew is so sensitive and so kind that like we were in a small like we were like four or five on the on the set um and yeah and it was like um really really easy actually because yeah we knew exactly so four axes we know what we are doing we don't redo and redo and redo you know the the, the scene so and this year there's been a lot about intimacy coordinators working with directors to shoot um, like sex scenes and sexual assault scenes. Um, did you have an intimacy coordinator involved at any point? No. No, we were, the, we were all the intimacy coordinator. At one point, I think if you are in a really, uh, if you trust each other, if what you are doing is really clear, if you are doing everything with a lot of kindness and love and you take care of everything, you don't need someone else. You know, it's like if you have to, you don't have someone else to tell you do that or don't do that. You know, it's like it's something it's it's a relation. It's a relationship. You know, it's uh, so no. And yeah, so to move from inside uh, to outside, the scenes of the skiing are so full of adrenaline and uh, excitement. Can you talk about shooting those skiing sequences to create that atmosphere? So actually, it's really easy again. I, I filmed the ski sequence the same way as I filmed the sex sequence. And actually, as I film all the film, I, as I shot all the film, uh, I, I, I give to my crew and to myself one rule at the beginning of the of the shooting, it was to be always from the point of view of Liz on on the side of the emotional body, to do a film really um, sensorial and really organic. Um, and it, I, I wanted this film to be like an experience, like you 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 enter inside the body of Liz and you will feel everything you with her. So the ski is exactly the same. I wanted to feel the, the emotion of skiing, the feeling of skiing, the fear, the adrenaline, the, the um, vertigo of the, the sensation. So, 
So I stuck my camera on the body. Um, um, I just followed the skier. And that was quite really easy. Like mm. it was just one really good <laughs> camera operator who was a really a good skier. So he did, it was a specialist and he did all the ski sequences and he just hold the camera with his hand and he's just follow the skier. That's it. So get yourself a cameraman who's also a good skier and you're <laughs> sorted. Yeah, I also, I read that it was quite difficult for you to get financing because people didn't want to really talk about the subject. Um, can you talk about how you like were able to keep going um, when you were meeting resistance? Yeah, it was quite hard because I think many different factors. I was a woman, it was my first field of film. I'm self-taught, so I didn't do any school. I'm not from Paris. I came from a small village in the middle of nowhere in France. Uh, on the subject, uh, sexual abuse in sports, nobody wanted to hear and to talk about that. So it was a lot of problematic to find <laughs> financing for this film. Um, yeah, so I was going to see all the the, chat, the TV channel, for example, or, or big distributor. And they were all telling me, oh, that's really interesting. Oh, the script is really well written. Really, really, really good. But no, no, you know, sports film don't work in cinema in France. I was like, what are you talking about? That's not a sports film. That's a film that, that that's not a love story. That's a grip story. That's the face to face between two really strong character on sport is just, but I think that was an excuse because they didn't want to see and to face the, the, the real subject of the film. And sometimes I had a lot of feedback who, who, who were, uh, the, 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 the trainer is not bad enough. And um, Liz, She's not a victim enough. It's too complicated. People will not understand, you know, because for the first time, I think I give a, a portrait really complex of those two characters. And he's not only a sexual, um, a crazy um, serial abuser, and she's not only a victim, because I wanted to show that this relation is really complex because of the, of the power but it's really complex. So I didn't want to just to, to draw a, a really simple portrait. And that was also hard for the people to understand. And they didn't want to understand. They didn't want to, to, to hear nothing about those story. You know, in 2007, we had a really famous uh, tennis player called Isabelle de Manjou. And she write a, a really good, uh, horrific book called Service Volley. And she, she tells the story of her childhood when she has been ab abused for like many, 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 many years um, uh, from her uh, tennis uh, trainer. Um, this, this book came out, but straight away after people told her, you have to stop talk. So we don't want to hear this story, you know? And we never hear any more story about that. So it's, it's really, it's really, um, yeah, what I faced as well, it was like, we don't want to hear that, you know? And after, after in 2017, we had the Me Too, so, 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 so the mind began to change. And after, that was crazy because I shot the film. And when I finished the, shot, the shooting, we had this many, many female who, who talk, begin to talk. We had Adele and Ael who talk and leave the César ceremony. We had Sarah Bitbal, which is a high scaling uh, athlete to, who, who explained that she has been abused. And we had a skier, Claudine Monet, who, who also um, tell a story in the newspaper. And it was like everybody, the, 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 it was a free talk for the first time. And that helped a lot, I think, the film when it was finished to, to exist and to be in festival. And, on, on to exist because maybe if my film will be released five years ago, maybe nobody, you know, uh, nobody wanted to, 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 to see that. Today, I think people on the society is able to watch this film and they want to see, okay, now we stop to, to, to keep this secret. Today, we want to see what happened.
and we want that the situation change. So I think that that's um, a story of so of timing, you know. So I'm really interested to know at the point where you were meeting a lot of resistance. I think maybe a lot of people would just give up. I'm interested to know what like powered you to keep going because it's you know it's you're telling a story that's so personal and if people are telling you no like how are you able to keep going because I'm like that <laughs> when, when someone tell me no that give me much more power to do it it's like it's my character you know if you say me don't don't eat chocolate I will push you and eat the chocolate, you know, it's like, I'm still a kid, I'm, I'm, I'm still like that. And I think as well, sports, because I did a lot of sports, because I still do a lot of sports. I'm not against sport. I'm not against male, you know. Uh, sport is, it's, is really important because I learned to, you know, you train, you train, it's really hard, and you fell down and you have to, you have to, to stand up again and you have to redo the training and, and you redo it. And at one point you get there where you want to be, you know? And, and in a way, this film, to make this film, it was the same than the, than the sport training, you know? Um, so, and I knew, I was convinced. I, I don't know, it, it, it's something a bit magic. I don't know, I, I knew I will do it. And I knew it was important and I knew it will work. It was like something I, I was sure in, in, in inside of me that uh, that was important and I had to fight. You know, sometimes some project you don't fight, you don't fight like that because the project is not so powerful. You feel all the lake of uh, stuff in your project, you know, but in this one, I really, and, and I work a lot. I rewrite a lot. I I um, I work a lot on the script because I knew it was really hard to to make this film, and I was afraid because it's a lot of it's a big responsibility to make a film on this subject. And and I had I put on myself a lot of pressure because I didn't want to make it wrong because I knew it was it's really easy to to make it wrong, and it's really bad if you make it wrong because the message is really important so so i was working a lot to to try to find the the good way you know the the good balance between all the ingredients of the script and after with my actor on on with the mise-en-scene on 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 the frame on on the artistic direction on everything i was like okay i have to so in fact this working on all those points give me a lot of power and I could and I didn't have time to think of people telling me no you know I was like I don't give a shit about that I have to concentrate to make it right so you know I have to do it because I'm saving myself doing that um, and I will save a lot of people I think so it's it was like like a mission like a divine mission you know something like you don't even control what you are doing. Something is pushing you to do it. It was, it was like when I was writing the script, I didn't understand what I was writing. I was just writing stuff. And I was like, oh my God, what I'm writing. It's like, ah, oh. you know, it just, it just sounds really weird, actually. And now your part of the mission is over <laughs> and the film is sort of, you know, it's, it's well, it's in the world or, or like coming into the world. Like, what is your hope for it now that, going to be seen by audiences i want the film to be seen because it's a bit it's it's really frustrating because i show the film in festival and hopefully i could do that because uh, i gave birth a little bit so i feel a bit released myself but um on i had a lot of feedback from press and from people in the in the premiere i did um but now, yeah, I really want the film to be shown in France, in the cinema. I want like a large audience uh, because right now it's like specific audience who see the film, you know, in festival, people who knew about the premiere. It's not like everybody. I hope that the film is, um, can be seen by, by really a, a large amount of people so it can maybe have an impact. But I'm, I'm already really happy actually because I couldn't imagine such an um, enthusiastic uh, life for this film on, on 
I receive such a lot of message from people and the press is really good. And, you know, and, and we have a lot of um, uh, people in sports who, who, who are now partner of the film. So they will use it as a pedagogic support. The sport minister is gonna use the film in the sport club to talk about the grip and the sexual abuse. I have like so many, so many um, sport club who, who are gonna take the film to use it as a, and that's, that's really good. I, really when I did the film, I wanted that, but I was thinking it will be much more difficult. I was thinking that, that the sport world will be against my film. Um, it was really not, like that. Actually, all the sports world in France is really taking my film as a as a um, 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 tools to change the situation, and that's really really good. I'm so happy, you know, because and that's why it was really important that the the trainer is not only a bad guy, is not a serial abuser, because I wanted that all the, the, the trainer could um, see themselves in this character and look at him um, to uh, and try to understand how can it happen. Um, yes, it can happen to everyone because that's not just about someone, it's about the system, the system of the pressure of the high level, the system of the uh, high level who don't give the, the um, tools to avoid those situations, who don't give the frame to avoid those situations. And, and so they, and after so many premieres, I did many premieres in, the, in, in some area where I had a lot of sport people, sportive, who came to see the film. And I had a lot of trainer, they came, coach, they came after the, the film and they were like, really moved and I could see the, the, their eyes really red because they were really, yeah, moved by the film. And they were telling me, oh my God, that I, I recognize myself in Fred and I feel so bad, but your film is so important because it helped me to understand what happened. And nobody told me what happened before. And everybody is doing that. And nobody say nothing because we don't know, we don't have tools, we don't have frame, we don't have, you know, so, so, so I'm I'm really happy actually about that. Um, so what tools or what frame would have would have saved you from going through what you went through, and what would now save people from being in that situation now? We have to explain that when you touch the bottom of a girl, to to to. Alors là, je sais pas comment dire en en. Je, je, I, I, I tell it in French because. It, ce que je veux dire, c'est que là, il faut vraiment des outils pédagogiques parce que, en fait, ce, ce, ce que je montre dans le film, c'est qu'il y a un vrai quiproquo du geste, un vrai quiproquo du regard et qu'il faut expliquer qu'il y a des gestes. Euh, il raconte une, les gestes que font un entraîneur, par exemple, réchauffer l'athlète la, le, le, en, lui, en lui caressant les fesses, en lui frottant les fesses. Ça peut être perçu comme une envie de désir pour une jeune adolescente qui ne sait pas ce que c'est. Donc, elle va lui envoyer un mauvais signal. Et ensuite, voilà, c'est-à-dire que c'est un, un enchaînement de Proco, quoi. Donc il faut en fait parler des choses, mais, mais de manière pratico-pratique, quoi, en prenant euh, chaque élément, euh, des choses très simples. Euh, et il y a des choses qu'on qu ne peut pas faire. Il faut il faut remettre du cadre, quoi. C'est ça que je veux dire. So my my last question um, is what's next for you? <laughs> That's a big uh, question because yeah. you know when you do your first film, everybody is telling you. It's really hard. And when you have done your first theater film and you are thinking about your second theater film, everybody tell you the second is more hard than the, than the first one. And you are like, oh my God. <laughs> so, so it's a big challenge to do a, a second film after Slalom because Slalom was so personal, so powerful. So, so it's not easy, but um, I'm working in many projects. Uh, that are less personal uh, because I think I need to move a bit from my own problematics in a way because in fact the subject I'm working on it's me again but it's not from my story it's more I will put of myself in other story but it's always about women powerful women 
heroin uh, trajectory, heroic trajectory, and um, and courage. So I am still in the same. In fact, I'm still in the same team. I think I think I will never. <laughs> Sometimes I'm, I'm I'm bored of myself. I'm like, oh my god, I, I'm always telling the same story. You know, all my short films tell tell the same story in a way. On on the film I'm working on, are still a bit the same story, but uh, in a different context, in a different epoch, with different character. Um, so yeah, I'm working in one one field of film for cinema. I'm working for um, a series for Netflix and, and also a, um, a film for TV. So so I think today something changed in the world about the um, the film industry. Uh, you have the platform who took a lot of power, and you have cinema who is still there. And I think it's really exciting, actually, to work on both sides because it's not the same kind of story. It's not the same kind of uh, storytelling and um, direction that you can give to 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 project. And I think it's really rich, actually, to to do. Like for example, the story I'm working on for Netflix is. I'm so happy to do that because I am on. It's a lot of myself. It's a bit like my top of the lake. You know, I'm doing my top of the lake. Um, you can develop such a, a great trajectory for for a woman in in like eight or six or eight like 52 minute film. And it's like, and, and it's easy to finance. And you know, it's you know you, you are not in this process really long with cinemas that you have to. To write script, uh, and after you have to go through commission, and after it's no, and after you have to rewrite, and after you have to to try to find financial, and sometimes it's not coming, and you have to go to the commission again, and you have to, you know, it's like, oh my god, like it's, it's really long. So, so with the with the the new new platform and stuff like that, it, it gives you also the opportunity to yeah to make quick gesture. Um, with strong message as well. I think I'm sure of that. So, um, so yeah, I experienced all those different uh, um, model. Um, um, it's quite exciting. So, but it's what well, the, the other stuff really exciting is like before slalom. Nobody wanted really me to be part of the cinema family. Like you know what I mean. <laughs> um, now everybody want to work with me. It's like. It's like everybody is like, ah, oh, we want to work with you. So it's like, ah, oh, cool. Uh, I like that. You know, it's because it's like 10 years. It, it took me 10 years to, to be there. So it's, uh, I feel that finally my, my, my next film will be maybe a bit um, less harder to do than Slalom. So that's good because it was really hard to do this one. So, <laughs> well, Congratulations on arriving in the cinematic family. Um, <laughs> uh, it sounds like you're in a great place creatively and I wish you the best of luck with that. And thank you so much for your time and um, for your passion and for, for your film. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. If you enjoyed this event, please consider donating to the BFI. They are a charity and your support will help them keep going. Thank you for watching and good night. <laughs>